Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Permaslug, and in this video I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, as part of kind of the, the freelancing and the creative work that I do, um, a good portion of that includes some kind of editing in whether it be Photoshop or um, on my Mac I use Final Cut. Spent a lot of time in Sony Vegas over the last couple years, never really in Adobe, but coming back into the Windows ecosystem is something that I wanted to do for a while. I used to be a pretty big gamer, and of course, so I, I spent a ton of time on Windows. Um, but I'm really interested in coming back into the Windows ecosystem purely for the sake of the value versus performance. Um, I've wanted to do a cube computer build for a long time, and this particular one is a very budget conscious build that is trying to balance gaming and uh, video editing performance. So, of course, on this channel, you guys will see all kinds of WordPress related stuff. All that, of course, has to be edited and, and uh, chopped up, so I don't really do anything intensive in terms of video processing and editing. Uh, but when I do, I don't like to sit around forever. Um, I used to work on a, if you can believe it, in 2018, I worked on a dual core um, Mac Mini, and uh, that was something that just really didn't cut it. Uh, as you can guess, it took forever to render even with 12 gigs of RAM in a solid state. Of course, that doesn't affect necessarily your render time, but um, I did everything I could to try to get more life out of that computer, and it just didn't cut it. So I got rid of that, I sold it, and invested my money into this stuff that you see here. So we'll go through what all this is, why I chose these particular parts, and if you're looking for something that's really budget conscious, uh, this is a really good way to do it. You may not prefer the cube case like I do, but this case was, I think, 49 or 59 bucks. So uh, it's really affordable, there's tons of options in this range, and I just really like the form factor and the value. So if you're looking at possibly getting yourself a new gaming or editing rig, um, this video will kind of cover what I chose and why, and also what you can expect in terms of cost versus performance. So I'm sure the first question you have is how much did all this cost and with Amazon Prime one day shipping all the stuff was on Amazon except the hard drives um, I paid $775 and about $25 of that was shipping so realistically I paid $750 for all the parts you see in front of me here. This particular processor and this motherboard will allow me to have onboard graphics if I so choose so you don't have to buy the video card like I mentioned I'm, I'm gonna be buying a friend's used GTX 960 for the time being and that's going to be totally sufficient for, for now. Uh, but you don't actually have to do that. You could do onboard graphics with this particular uh, processor. So just to kind of start everything off, I just bought a Gigabyte B360 motherboard. Uh, this one is the LGA 1151-300 series for the 8000 and 9000 series i5 and i7s. So I went ahead and got the i5-9600K. And the reason I chose that over the i7-8700K is there's, first of all, about a $100 price difference. Um, this one has a little bit lower of a default, um, you know, base clock speed. But the main thing that I thought was that extra $100 does get you the, um, the 12 processor threads as opposed to this one which just has 6 core 6 threads. So I personally didn't see the value because every benchmark I looked at the Gamers Nexus video is extremely thorough on the comparisons of these particular chips. Um, and the performance difference was negligible in the things that I care about. So for instance, in video games, it was nearly identical. Uh, of course, with the top of the line graphics card. So the, the gaming performance really wasn't all that different. It was within about five to 10 frames, usually about five or 10%, which is totally satisfactory. For me, that $100 savings allowed me to upgrade to a water cooler as opposed to just like the Hyper Evo 212 cooler that you probably found for 29 bucks. Um, I wanted the, the water cooler for this particular build to kind of keep things quiet, keep it really cool because that compact case, I was concerned about uh, the airflow. But the, the main thing, like I said, was that the i5, in my opinion, that $100 savings, I could put to use in a lot of other areas. And the 100 extra dollars I didn't feel like was going to give me that much more performance. Now, one area that it would if you went and spent the 100 extra dollars to get the i7-8700K would be is if you're really heavily editing in Adobe Premiere. Um, that particular program can take advantage of the extra threads in that processor, so those 12 threads will help you. Um, and that will reduce your render times rather significantly, I will say. Uh, but I don't use Adobe, and I probably won't in the near future. I'm going to test out DaVinci Resolve, um, and if that doesn't work, maybe I'll go to Adobe. But um, the extra thread performance didn't really affect me all that much. I didn't really see the justification for it. Um, although if you do 3D rendering, like in Blender or something like that, then the i7 is absolutely the way to go. If you're exclusively a gamer, the i5 is the way to go, for sure. There's no doubt about it. 
So moving on, the, the motherboard is just a motherboard. It's, it's a micro ATX board. Um, it's just got four RAM slots, you know, nothing really all that fancy. And I bought that particular one because it was on sale. It had really good reviews. And like I said, I didn't really care except that this was a B360. And it was either the B360 or the Z370, I think it is. And this one just fit the bill perfectly. To match in that board, I have two 8 gig sticks of DDR4 RAM. So I got a total of 16 with the capability of expanding to 32 if I ever need to. Like I said before, my Mac Mini actually had 12 gigs of RAM and that was more than plenty for me. I would get pretty close during video editing and if I had a couple like Chrome tabs open or something. Uh, so 16 is going to be totally sufficient and this RAM is faster than what I had before. This little box right here is just some extra case fans and I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to get those in uh, or where they're going to go, but they are white LEDs which is going to be cool. Like I mentioned a moment ago, I got the um, Corsair H100i Pro, the um, RGB edition <laughs> of the CPU cooler, and this was, I think it was 99 bucks, um, and that's something I've wanted to do for a long time, so I figured since I'm doing the cube case, and uh, you know, I might as well just go ahead and do the liquid cooler as well. So none of this stuff is necessarily revolutionary, but I think it's a really nice build, uh, you know, up-to-date hardware and good solid specs for the price. Um, I also got the EVGA 650 watt, uh, I think it's like bronze certified or whatever, uh, fully modular, and not that I really care about it being modular in this particular case, but it will actually benefit me probably a lot in the cable management, which is going to be something I'm super meticulous about, so that will be actually kind of helpful now that I say that. Um, and then as I mentioned, I didn't actually buy any hard drives, so that's something that you would have to factor in probably about another hundred extra dollars for roughly depending on what you get. Um, this motherboard does actually have M2 SATA, so you could buy the tiny little um, like stick SSD, but I have this from actually my Mac Mini. This is a one terabyte WD Blue SSD. Not the most amazing SSD in the world, but that's okay. The performance is still good. And then I actually have a one terabyte Western Digital Black Drive that will be for uh, video storage, just kind of file management, and probably uh, will be rendering to the solid state from the files on this, one way or the other, depending on how the performance is actually better. So that way I can store my video files on one drive and render to the other, hopefully increasing the performance as well. Um, and then I also have a, an extra 1.5 terabyte drive that I will use, probably not internally, but I do have a little external hard drive caddy, um, and I'll use this guy for backing up all my stuff. So that kind of covers the actual components of this particular build. The final thing I'll mention is this case. Like I said, I wanted to do a cube computer case for a long time and now is finally the time. I just had to find the right circumstances and I'm really really happy with how this thing looks. It's actually a lot bigger than I thought it would be but that totally makes sense because of course the square motherboard has to fit in there. Um, but there's a number of different configurations. You can put the motherboard horizontal or vertical, all kinds of stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and open this stuff up, let you guys see it and then we'll kind of talk more in depth about everything we're going to do here. So here is our Gigabyte B360 motherboard. Like I said, this is the Micro ATX one. Um, it does have the mSATA port. I don't have that mSATA SSD, but maybe at some point in the future I would. Um, the, the SATA ports are split up, which is kind of interesting. I do believe that one of the two of those, or maybe both, are disabled when you're using the mSATA port. Um, but overall, it's just a really standard board. Uh, one of the four RAM slots for 32 gigs of RAM. And then, um, of course, the mSATA and the USB 3.0 is pretty much standard on a, every motherboard you're going to find, especially in the, um, the 1151-300 series for any of the newer processors. So other than that, the onboard video, as you can see, includes VGA, DVI, and HDMI. Um, and then got four USB 3.0s and two USB 2.0s, as well as the PS2 um, port for legacy keyboards and mice and stuff. Uh, but other than that, this board looks really nice. I'm happy with the way it looks. I like the dark colors. I didn't want any like red flashy craziness. Obviously, I could have gotten one of those boards with the huge heat sinks on the North Bridge and all that, but I wasn't really concerned with any of that. So this board fits the bill perfectly for me. And then these are the two RAM sticks I got. It's two 8 gigs. Um, and that's really all I needed. Didn't get anything special. This is the 2400 megahertz speed. And that's exactly in spec for this board and this particular processor. So, like I said, nothing revolutionary, but it does do the job. Now, moving on to the Corsair H100i Pro. This is the RGB model. I didn't really care about the RGB. 
Um, I'd probably just set it to white or blue and be really kind of basic anyway. But uh, these things are really cool. I've wanted a water cooler for a while, not to overclock necessarily, but just for the, the noise potential, um, making sure that the processor runs extremely cool and keeping the fan speed at a minimum to reduce noise as much as possible. Next up we have the EVGA power supply. I think I said this one was fully modular earlier, which is actually not true, I was mistaken. Um, I wouldn't really have purchased a fully modular one to, you know, for any other reason other than just maybe the price was great or something, but this particular one was one of the best reviewed ones on Amazon and on uh, Newegg. This one is just a 650 watt, 850 plus certified bronze, or excuse me, 80 plus certified bronze. Um, and this one is totally gonna fit the bill. I'm not gonna really be overclocking or doing anything crazy on this computer, at least for the foreseeable future. And if that comes up, then that will definitely be something we can look at if we need more power. But overall, this one is really, really nice. It's actually got a good weight to it. Feels really sturdy and uh, I trust the reviews and EVGA products are generally great. So this one, once again, is definitely gonna fit our bill for sure. Moving on, like I showed you guys earlier, I have a one terabyte SSD, which is a Western Digital Blue. Nothing crazy. If I were buying this brand new, I would get the Samsung 860 Evo or 850 or whatever it is now. Um, and then I just have this one terabyte Western Digital Black Drive as a secondary. So the OS will be installed on the SSD, of course. And then I'll use this one for files and videos. Um, and then I have another backup drive over here. One of the final pieces of the puzzle that we'll talk about is the processor. As I mentioned earlier, this is the i5-9600K, the new LGA 1151-300 series. Um, and this particular one is comp comparable to the i7-8700K. It has a similar base and turbo clock, but the difference between this and the i7, the i5 has six cores and six threads, whereas the i7 has six cores and 12 threads. So uh, multi-threaded applications like Blender or like Adobe Premiere are going to take advantage of the extra threads. Uh, but in a pure gaming kind of comparison, if you're only a gamer, this particular processor is going to be great. In my case, like I said, I took the $100 savings and bought the water cooler. So to me, that really justifies it. And like I said, I was more concerned with building something that was affordable and was going to last a long time rather than having the absolute best. Um, to me, that $100 increase really wasn't worth it. So I was totally happy with the i5. A, a part of me does think, well, maybe I should have just bought the i7 and totally future-proofed my computer but I feel totally happy with my i5 purchase. So last but certainly not least is the Thermaltake Core V21 case, which is something I've wanted to build for a long time. The cube cases to me have been really cool for, for being compact and I end up carrying my computer around either back and forth to my office, I'm at my house right now, but uh, sometimes I have to take it to my office or you know, like it, back in the day we would do LAN parties and stuff. And the cube case just always seemed like it would be a really cool way to uh, easily transport your computer. Right out of the box, the, the fan installed is a 200 millimeter up front. There's actually not one in the rear here, but I do have this box here with three uh, additional 120 millimeter fans. So I'll probably put one back here if it'll fit. I can't quite tell, I think it will. And then the radiator is gonna go up top here for the CPU cooler. And then if I can squeeze them in, uh, then I'll probably put the other two fans up there or find a home for them elsewhere. I think you can also take out the 200 millimeter in the front and so, something like that, we'll figure it out. But this case is really, really nice. I'm actually really pleased with the sturdiness of it right out of the box. It looks really, really nice. I would have bought a white one if they still had it available on the Core 21, uh, the Core V21, but unfortunately they did not. So also, one thing I didn't realize is this little guy here is magnetic. So you could put your own little symbol up front or you could take off the thermal take one if you wanted to. And that's pretty cool.
So I've had about two weeks with this computer now and I did have some stability issues right when I first put it together, but I was able to fix that with just one BIOS update. So if you're in the market for a budget conscious editing and gaming rig, this is definitely the way to go in my opinion. I really didn't spend that much money. I, I don't have that great of a graphics card and I still couldn't be happier. At this point, there's nothing I need to do to upgrade it to you know make it better. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. If you're in the market for a computer like this, you can find all of the links to the items that I used in the description below, as well as links to my website. And also, I would love for you guys to subscri subscribe to the channel. Normally, everything on this channel is WordPress and freelancing related. So if that's of interest to you, I'll look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. Thank you so much for watching.